Hi guys, welcome to something completely different. This is a real chemistry and uh, the first of a few videos that hopefully we'll be able to make to give you a look at some of the experiments that we're actually doing through the chemistry course. Today we're going to be looking at the addition of bromine water to cyclohexane and cyclohexene. Now this is one of the important tests that you need to do in order to identify the difference between alkanes and alkenes. These tests, of course, are used to determine the presence of the double bond because the double bond is more reactive than the single bonds. In order to do that, we're going to uh, switch the view a little bit away from me and a little bit closer to the action. So if you focus on what's going on here, I'll just talk you briefly through it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually have a look at the bromine water. Okay? So this is the substance that we're going to be using in order to determine what's actually going on. Before I open, I'm just going to turn on our fume cupboard because there's a couple of important problems that we have with this particular experiment. Firstly, the bromine water itself is corrosive. So you can see I've got some protective equipment here. I've got my safety glasses on, I've got gloves, and I've also got my uh, lab coat that I can use. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to draw up a small amount of the bromine water. Um, and you can see when I do that, transfer it over into the first of the test tubes. And as I do that, you'll notice that um, the bromine water has a quite distinctive color. Okay, there's the color of the bromine water. And at this stage, I haven't reacted anything with it. Um, and if we um, just move a small uh, white object behind that, hopefully that'll be me or that'll be this, you can see the colour of the bromine water. So that's, that's what the bromine looks like as our start. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of this substance here, okay? This is cyclohexene and the ene tells us that this is a compound with a double bond. So the double bond, the presence of that double bond is hopefully going to make the uh, substance a little bit more reactive and so therefore we can um, perhaps see a reaction. So I've drawn some of the liquid up, now I'm going to transfer it across. At this point um, I'm only going to transfer about a mil, I'm not looking at this straight on, which I should be, so it's a bit of poor technique here, but just want you to see this as a qualitative reaction today. So here we have, again against a little background, here we have our cyclohexene. Now it just looks like water. But what happens if we add a little bit of our bromine water to it? So I'm just going to allow some drops to go in there. Okay? We can see what's happening is the colour is disappearing quite quickly from the bromine water. So let me put just a few more drops in and take that out, and we'll see if we can see what's going on. All right. Okay. So what you see happening here is the bromine, the bromine water is actually sitting at the bottom. So the bromine is right down the bottom of the test tube. There's a little bit of color still there in the aqueous layer, but very quickly it moves into the organic layer, which is where the cyclohexene is, and it disappears. Okay? So anything that's in that layer is just disappearing. And if I give it a little bit of a shake, just to make sure that it's mixing a little bit better, you can see pretty much all that color is just about gone. Okay? That's an immediate reaction. It's called an addition reaction, and it occurs when we have a, an unsaturated hydrocarbon with a double bond in it, like the cyclohexene, and as a consequence of that, the bromine water is adding across that double bond, and the colour disappears. So does the same thing happen if we use an alkane? So our alkane is this one, okay? It's cyclohexane. Now, the problem with these is being organic Hydrocarbons, they are very flammable, and that's one of the reasons I'm using the fume cupboard while I do this particular experiment, um, and it's also one of the reasons why I'm keeping bunts and burners and any other naked flames away. So I'm just going to drop some of this liquid as well, 
transfer a little of this into the third of my test tubes. Okay, there it is. And so there's the third one. Okay, here's the substance. You can see it looks very similar to cyclohexene. No difference really at this point. But let's see if we can see a difference when we add some bromine water. Okay, just put a few little drops in first of all like I did before. Um, and you can see this time that the problem that we're having is that the colour is actually moving into the other layer. So let's see, let me just take that out of there and see if we can see that. So what you should be able to see happening now, give it a bit of a shake, give it a bit of a shake, is the colour is actually, there's still a separation, it's harder to see with this one, but the colour is deeper at the bottom where the bromine water still is, but some of the bromine has actually moved into the organic layer. You can see it's sitting in our organic layer. But it's not reacting. If I give it a shake, try and get it to react, make that colour disappear. Okay, nothing's happening. Here's our cyclohexene. So here's cyclohexene, here's cyclohexane. So two substances that differ only in that the first one, this one up here, has a double bond. This one has only single bonds. And you can see that it's the, the bromine colour is persisting in the cyclohexane. Diffusion has allowed the bromine to move from the aqueous layer into the organic layer, but it has not reacted. It does not react readily. Now there may be a way where we can get this to react, but you'll have to come for a little walk with me. In order to get this to react, what we have to do is we have to take it out into the sunshine. If we take it out into the sunshine, the ultraviolet rays may actually get the um, bromine to react with the cyclohexane. Of course, for that to happen, we need some nice sunlight. So, here it is. Now this is a different kind of reaction. This is a substitution reaction. And so it's only going to happen in the presence of quite strong ultraviolet light. I have added quite a bit of bromine this time around. And I'll have to kind of show you it against my lab coat. That color's just slowly starting to fade particularly in that top layer. And if I wait here for long enough, I can already see that that colour's quite faded. And it's the ultraviolet radiation from the sun, that extra energy, that's allowing that to react. Okay, it's not quite all gone, but it's pretty close. Alright, it's pretty close now. So that's not a spontaneous reaction. We need to give it a bit more energy if we want that one to react. You can see the colours just about disappeared now. If you're not convinced, let's go back and compare it to the original bromine water. This is a substitution reaction because the bromine has actually substituted for one of the hydrogens. There is no double bond, so it doesn't add across the double bond. Instead, what it does is it substitutes one bromine for one hydrogen. And as a consequence of that, we get a slightly different thing going on here because we also get an additional product, which is hydrogen bromide. So here is our original solution. Let me look at all three of these again. I'll mix them up. Here's our original bromine water. So here's the colour of the bromine water. Here is the cyclohexane, hexene, with the bromine water. And here is our cyclohexane. Ain, but you can see, so you can see the colours significantly changed. But we've also had a second thing going on here, which is the substitution reaction, and so we have hydrogen bromide also sitting in that organic layer. So there's the three different uh, liquids that we have. The bromine water test, which is one of the most important ones that you need to be aware of in terms of trying to locate the uh, presence of a double bond or the uh, alkene from an alkane. I hope that helped and thanks for watching.